like down the road guys. And this year here, they one and two, you know, they get the opportunity to go in with the first quarterback right away and take reps so they're comfortable this year. And they playing faster and they playing smarter. They still making mistakes. But I mean that's the growing process. It's a new offense. Who would? Can I ask you who are the knuckleheads you were talking about? Well, uh, I'm not saying you know, they don't know. Knuckleheads. They, they all knuckleheads. That's what I guess that's just a pet name I just okay. use. Okay. You, went, you went through uh, a couple of different fullbacks last year. Well, just two. I was what's, just two. What's the fullback role what, well, here in this office? It, it was totally different from the last year this year. Last year was looking for a thumper. Yeah. And that's with Agnew, and that was uh, Small. uh, Smalls provided us there. This year here, we're looking for more of an H-back type guy, which is a cross between a tight end and a fullback that can move out of the backfield and still can line up as a tight end and run routes down the field as well as get lined up in the backfield and not be that thumper but cover up a guy. What do you like about Duke so far? What do you think he's going to bring to your room? Uh, here, Duke is going to bring to a room. It's just one is that it just brings more competitiveness to the room. Uh, he is a guy that that played outside. Uh, you know, my best way I you know I can describe Duke is that like Thurman Thomas was for Buffalo in, in the years of past. That he's going to be all over the field and it's a where's Waldo and you know he gives you another dimension. You know he get one on one create one on one problems. We hoping that's going to be. We hope he can be a little bit like uh, 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 the kid uh, Bernard in uh, Cincinnati. Uh, if he can do that for us, that you know, that gives us a, a different perspective on how we approach the field, and it gives us a chance to move people around and taking care of, you know, and taking advantage of mismatch. What's his learning curve in terms of pass protection? You know, for when well, he's coming in here, that's always well, you know, that's 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 a big thing. That's not a learning. That's just about technique and fundamentals. You know, you get your guy and block your guy. That's not a, that is just he already know the plays. We just hadn't had the pads on to go through the other aspects of it, uh, picking up linebackers, and, and that's going to be a total mismatch because he's not going to he's not going to be able to man up. Duke is a 207 linebackers, 240s through that. That's going to be a mismatch, but it, the equalizer is that he's getting out of the backfield and running routes, and that's that's his advantage. And uh, do you think that, that Duke can come in here and be a an every down back and? You can't, it's hard to have an air down back in this league because you know the too, there's too much punishment going on out there on the field. Now Duke's job is to come in and find you know we got to find out and carve out a role for Duke. You know uh, it would it wouldn't be fair to say hey Duke going to start off season and we had never put the pads on yet and say he's our starter. We don't know how he's going to recover from practice to practice yet. You know it's totally different from college to here and he wasn't utilized that way at Miami a lot. So uh, Duke is. We just got to find a way how we're going to utilize him. And like Le'Veon Bell first year, he wasn't a guy. But you you, you kind of like work him into being a guy. And uh, Duke, I'm not saying he's not going to be the guy. And, and, but, you know, I don't know what the workload that he can handle right now. On paper, running backs probably one of the, the deeper positions on the team. Again, on paper, yeah. in your mind as a coach, do you have an idea of already how you see the position shaking out and you just, you just you still have to evaluate it? Have you even gotten to that point yet with all the bodies you, can't, you have? You, you can't do that. I mean, we we, we, we walking around here in, you know, in pajamas and underpants <laughs> and until we put the pads on and after you go through a few weeks of the, you know, hard knocks and uh, competition, then things has a way to start to shape up. But, I mean, you can put guys in the Pro Bowl and say they're Hall of Fame people you know, when you're watching them out on the field. And I've seen those those guys disappear once the pass come on. How does a team get mental toughness? You know what? Mental toughness it starts with the room. Yeah, you know, and everyone has all their room accountable for. Uh, you got to talk to them. You got to sell it, and they have to believe into it. You got to, you know, you just can't talk. You got to make them work towards that. I mean, it's mental toughness. Shoot, you got to be able to work your way through so many of the elements of the game. I mean. Uh, those variables are always in the way, but it's a belief deal here. We got to believe in something. We got to hang our head on something. And uh, I mean, you know, we got off to a great start last year, and then you know, uh, you know, kind of like filtered out. 
you know, you got to hang your head on something. You got to believe in it. You got to have uh, everybody got to <coughs> have goals, personal goals as well as team goals, and have to have a vision on where you're going. And I, and you you just can't wait on the other guy to like the match.